Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode two of the aggressive cut. I'm taking the next six to eight weeks cutting down as hard as I can. Uh, the last episode you saw was about three days ago. Uh, it was a lower body slash upper body day. I hit those front squats. Um, but since I'm rehabbing the back, lower body days are only once, one, one, one and a half sessions a week and upper body is about four sessions a week. So basically with my upper body work, I am um, doing my own variation of the Kaizen off season, infinite off season, which is just a free program we put out. Um, it's a base program that's made to be customized for you guys. Link below for the free program and link below uh, for my video on how to customize it for yourself. Stimulus and fatigue is all kind of one big battery. Um, the more, um, and it takes away from everything. Although you'll think you have a leg battery and a, a life stress battery and a kid's battery and a homework battery and a upper body battery, they're all kind of the same. And so when you do a lot of fatigue to it, it, it soaks away the battery from one battery. So point being that I'm doing less lower body weight and volume uh, so I can give more attention to my upper body and hopefully recover still and more condition and more into my conditioning, which I've mentioned in the last video where I can do high intensity interval training uh, on the assault bike where typically if I'm squatting and deadlifting a lot, that would be too fatiguing for me personally. Some people get away with it uh, in which my cardio would be more like a long walk, elliptical, et cetera. So with the Kaizen training, I'm taking it, and basically it's a daily undulating uh, program where you know one day is kind of fives with the slow progression to get stronger, another day is tens or fifteens with a little bit more hypertrophy in the uh, in the upper body movements and the lower body movements. So uh, today my variation is close grip. I did it for uh, sets of eight to ten. Um, I did do a little bit heavier work with my overhead pressing because uh, last time I overhead earlier in the week it was uh, sets of eight to ten. So I kind of flip flop those. Uh, some strength work with pull uh, weighted chin ups, uh, sets of eight. Finish it off with just a little bit of arms. Um, I try to hit my arms, the frequency fairly high. So again, three to four times a week for chest, back and arms basically. Uh, but then the volume in each session kind of goes down a little bit. So we're stimulating, uh, kind of milking it out. Uh, the conditioning is gonna be the same for me. It's an assault bike, uh, 15, uh, 15 to 20 seconds all out. As hard as I can, about a minute and a half recovery. Uh, today I did five rounds and we're gonna try to uh, slowly increase that to six, seven, eight rounds as the weeks go by and my conditioning gets better. Uh, I did, my lungs, now this is probably 10 days in of the conditioning, uh, I'm doing about three or four times a week. My lungs are getting better uh, on the recovery part, uh, but now kind of the lactic acid pump feeling in my legs uh, is what stops me or is holding me back. So all that kind of uh, will get better as time improves. To get strong, typically it takes years and years and years of doing the same thing and progressively overloading. To get in really good condition, um, both lungs and your body, kind of that lactic acid uh, threshold, um, Oh, it can only take you know two, four, six weeks to get in really good condition. Obviously, if we're talking Olympic level, that's a lifetime of work, et cetera. But to get into a generally good condition where I can handle more rounds, uh, the progression is a lot easier. So the question is to uh, avoid um, um, compression of the spine or an axial load, a load coming down on your spine uh, because your back hurts or because of whatever reason. Um, should you avoid the overhead press? And my answer to most things is one, if you have any kind of injury or something, you need to see a doctor. You don't need to go to Instagram, you don't need to go to YouTube to get that answer. For me, myself, I know my uh, back flares up when I do a hip hinge. So uh, lower bar squat, uh, conventional pull, even a sumo pull, something of that nature, uh, even RDLs. So those are the things that I'm worried about. Uh, generally speaking, yes, maybe uh, if an overhead press is uh, aggravating your injury or pain, then you need to avoid it. For me, uh, myself and I, uh, I can do strict overhead just fine with no pain, so I'm not too worried about it. Even right now, we're doing front squats, as you saw in the last video, hopefully, um, with no pain. Um, I can ride a bike with no handlebars. You know that song? Mm -hmm. You should know about that. Uh, I can do overhead press with no pain. I can do uh, light RDLs with no pain, and I can do front squats with no pain. So those are the things that I'm sticking to, and then we'll slowly scale upwards. Uh, do the lifts you can at a load you can with no pain and no form breakdown, and then so slowly progress to that. Uh, right now I'm doing the stiff legs at 185 with no pain. I'll build up to maybe 315 stiff leg with no pain. Then we'll go to a conventional pull 225 with no pain and build up from there. That's kind of literally the basis of all strength training and it's gonna be the basis of all rehab uh, beyond any uh, catastrophic injury where you might need something more entailed. But if you're hurt and bench press hurts your elbow tendonitis, stop bench pressing. Uh, try to do push-ups, try to do dumbbell press. If those don't hurt, continue to progress with those with volume and load until uh, you're at an extreme or until you're at kind of a plateau uh, 
then you can go back to the bench press and slowly build your way back up. Uh, and that's how you program. That's how everything works. I know that sounds basic and there are some tricks and things to figure out in between uh, because not all injuries are just from the stimulus. Some are actual injuries, um, you know, structural injuries, and some are also uh, from a mobility or a imbalance where you need to fix. And that's where the muscle docs coming in to help my imbalances. I'm gonna talk about nutrition a little bit. Uh, I mentioned I'm kind of tracking, but I'm kind of not. Sometimes I do better mentally um, by just eating uh, and being aware of what I'm eating. I have tracked my food, kind of a flexible dieting style for uh, two years pretty much straight. So I have a really good idea of what my body needs when uh, and also what uh, type of calories, protein, carbs, and fats, what macronutrients are in each type of food. So uh, I do suggest that every athlete at some point in their life tries uh, to track their food for a good six months straight to get a general idea of nutrition uh, and what is inside the type of foods that they like to eat. Uh, I will probably track my food every two to three days um, just to make sure I'm on where I'm going. Uh, to find your macronutrients for yourself, uh, the best way to start is just to find your maintenance. And there's a couple ways to do that. There's calculators online. Uh, helps you easy enough. Uh, the Kaizen programs that we sell come with a macronutrient calculator that uh, progresses you through your diet or through your bulk. Um, but if you don't wanna go through that, all you basically have to do is uh, find your variable. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna weigh yourself every morning. Write that down in a note on your phone or on a piece of paper and track it. Then what you're also gonna do is just track every single thing you eat. Uh, then after seven days of this, you just find the average of both. You find the average of the calories you ate over seven days and find the, cal the average of, the, of what you weighed over seven days. Uh, and then you basically figure out that 3,000 calories or whatever that average is uh, allows you to weigh whatever this average is, 200 pounds. Um, and then from there you can uh, figure out what you wanna do. So if you wanna gain weight, you add you know, 250 calories a day, uh, typically in carbs and fat. If you wanna lose weight, you can add, uh, subtract 250 calories a day, typically in carbs or fats, uh, where the protein, uh, majority of the time what I have people do is eat their body weight in uh, grams of protein. So if you weigh 200 pounds, you're gonna eat 200 pounds of protein. The only time that may adjust is if you are um, at a higher body fat percentage. If you're over 25% body fat, we may knock that protein down a little bit. Uh, and then adjusting carbs and fat depending on uh, the athlete, uh, the person, uh, the, t uh, the type of sport they play, and then also a little bit of personal preference on the types of foods they eat and how they feel. That's a general outline of it. Uh, for get conditioning myself, as I mentioned, um, the high intensity uh, historically has uh, left me more fatigued and it's uh, been harder to recover from. And I think that's for a lot of people, obviously, you're, you're going all out. Um, uh, and so it does take away some of that glycogen. It does take away uh, some of that, 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 that battery uh, stimulus or energy that we have. Uh, it is more fatiguing, but the results for myself uh, historically, I uh, have burnt more fat. I felt um, leaner that way. Now, I, I know uh, burning calories is burning calories and uh, HPOC and all these things. So basically, when you do high intensity cardio, people say that you may burn less calories uh, or science says that you burn less calories during it because you're only going for five to 10 minutes, uh, even with those rounds. Uh, but then the, the lasting uh, calorie burn is elevated throughout uh, the next 24 hours. And that's similar to weight training. Uh, that's why people say when they wanna lose weight, all they do is cardio is probably the wrong thing. You wanna build that muscle uh, because uh, uh, not only does a training session burn more calories long term, but having more muscle burns more calories long term, uh, meaning days, years, uh, weeks, months, etc. cetera. Uh, so the high intensity for me historically works really well. What I like to do is, is as well as those calories, we want to slowly take them away, slowly layer them away by, uh, you know, maybe 250. So say we'll take that example. You're 200 pounds and you have maintenance at 3000 calories, which you'd maybe do is add one cardio session a week and take away 250 calories a day milk that out until you plateau and then you slowly adjust something. So maybe then you add another cardio session uh, a week and you're still eating 200, uh, 2,750 calories and now you're doing two cardio sessions a week. You milk that out till you plateau, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But since I'm on a more aggressive a cut, um, we're bumping everything up a little bit. So I'm, I'm, uh, my calories are, are fairly far down. Uh, I know what I need to lose weight. I, I maintain my weight really good in a big range and a big calorie, uh, eating a lot of food. Uh, but to lose weight, I have to get pretty aggressive with it. And then my cardio is high, as I mentioned. I'm jumping straight into uh, three times a week, four times a week-ish high intensity intervals. So that's the plan for me. Today I woke up, I ate a little bit of Ezekiel bread, uh, like three or four pieces, and they are 10, cal uh, 10 carbs each. 
Uh, and after eating that, I forgot to weigh myself right away. I was 210. Uh, remember, I started at 212, so uh, progress is good. I'm about 10 days into uh, my calories being in a deficit uh, as well as the cardio. So a little bit of that is water, a little bit of that is just uh, the added cardio and stimulus. So we'll see how it progresses and goes. I'm feeling good, just ate some Chipotle. That session felt pretty good. My strength in my upper body uh, is solid. Hit a PR, uh, beltless, rah, 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 no, no, no. Overhead strict press, 205 for three. Uh, so I ain't mad at you. And I will see you guys Tuesday we're visiting our homie, the muscle doc, who's helping me with my lower body rehab um, with a little bit of vlog, a little bit of information.